Before today's hearing, our next guest said he wanted to learn who at DOJ knew what and when. Did he get answers about that and more from demoted DOJ official Bruce Orr today? Congressman Jim Jordan joins me now. He sits on the House Judiciary and Oversight Committees. Uh, Congressman, thanks for joining us tonight. You bet. All right, did you, you. did you get answers to your questions today? Yeah, we did. We're not allowed to get into all the details until the transcript goes public, but understand the basics, which I know you do. Uh, Bruce Orr, top Justice Department official, his wife worked for the firm hired by the Clintons to put together the dossier, which was the key thing to go get the warrant to spy on President Trump's campaign. We did know, to, we did learn today for sure that when the FBI took the, took the dossier to the secret court to get the warrant to spy on Carter Page, they didn't tell the court important facts like who paid for the document, they didn't tell the court about the Orr's involvement in producing the document, and they didn't tell the court that Christopher Steele had this extreme bias against President Trump. Important facts that they should have disclosed to the court they didn't. They got the warrant, and they spied on Carter Page. All right, and to that point, your colleague, uh, Mark Meadows, Congressman Mark Meadows, had this to say earlier today when talking about some of the evidence that may have been used potentially uh, to get information. Uh, he said this, we've learned new information suggesting our suspicions are true. FBI, DOJ have previously leaked info to the press and then used those same press stories as a separate source to justify FISA's. Unreal. Tomorrow, meaning today's Bruce Orr interview is even more critical. Mm -hmm. Did he ever do this? Did you all talk about the potential for leaks that then the articles that came from those leaks were used to then justify further investigations? Yeah. Again, we, we, we know this was happening. Remember the one uh, graph or diagram that the inspector general, Mr. Horowitz, produced in his report. It talked about, I think, 13 different people at the FBI talking to one reporter. So we know this game was going on, leaking things like crazy, talking to the press all the time. Instead of just focusing on doing their job, they were doing some of this stuff. So again, I can't get into the details, mm -hmm. but yeah, this, this was, remember Chairman Nunes' memo. He talked about the Yahoo News story that right. Mr. Isikoff wrote. They used that when they went to the FISA court to buttress their argument about the dossier and to get the warrant. Again, stuff you're never supposed mm -hmm. to do, but these guys did it. Okay, uh, Congressman Matt Gates had this to say about now potential conflicts between what you've heard from different witnesses about what started the entire Russia investigation. Here's what the congressman said. In the first hour of testimony, it became very clear that there are a number of factual conflicts, either Bruce Orr's lion or Glenn Simpson's lion. And in another circumstance, either Bruce Orr's lion or Lisa Page's lion. Uh, and Congressman, he talked about the fact that maybe they all need to be testifying together to deconflict and find out what the truth yeah. is. Yeah, well, I, I do think we got a conflict between what Mr. Simpson said to the House Intelligence Committee when he said he didn't talk to anyone at DOJ or FBI and then what Mr. Orr has conveyed in both some of the emails that we already had a chance to look at and some of the things that were said today. I think there's a definite conflict there. I think that underscores why we need to have Glenn Simpson back in front of the mm -hmm. Judiciary Committee in a deposition like we had Mr. Orr today. Uh, Congressman Issa characterized Bruce Orr today as having a, quote, poor memory. Was that your take? There were times where he seemed to say that, you know, can't recall, don't rightly know when that happened, the exact time frame. But uh, look, you, you got to come back to the basics here. All these key people at the FBI who ran the Clinton investigation and people at the Justice Department who also then launched and ran the Russian investigation, we've seen things we have never seen before, like the fact that Director Comey was fired, Andy McCabe, Deputy Director, was fired, Jim Rubicki has left the FBI, the former Chief of Staff, mm -hmm. Jim Baker, who comes in for a deposition later this week, was first demoted, he was FBI Chief Counsel, then he left the FBI, Lisa Page, FBI Counsel, demoted, then left, and of course Peter Strzok, Deputy Head of Counterintelligence, demoted, then fired. And of course, over on the DOJ side, you got Sally Yates, who was fired, and Bruce Orr, who's been demoted two times. These were the key people involved in all this, and I've never seen where you have top people who ran the two key investigations, so many people be fired, demoted, or have to leave their respective employment. Mm -hmm. That is something I've never witnessed before, and again, this is why this is so important. We have these depositions, and we get the answers to important questions. Well, and now where we are is with the special counsel investigation. Did you discuss, whether you can answer uh, the specifics or not, but did you discuss with Mr. Orr whether or not he or his wife, Nellie Orr, have been contacted or had interviews yes. with the special counsel? 
We did talk about, uh, we did ask those questions. I'm not going to, we can't give the answers again, and we're not supposed to give the answers until mm -hmm. this transcript goes okay. public. I hope we release the transcript, but we did talk about that. Uh, like I said, we asked lots of questions. I think there's some, some interesting things that also happen. When the FBI terminated their relationship with Christopher Steele, Bruce Orr continued to meet with him. That's important. And there's some other things we learned that are associated with that that I think are real important. And when those come out, when the transcript's released, mm -hmm. I think that'll be something else that we need to talk about. Any kind of timeline on that for the transcript? I hope soon as possible because, okay. again, there was nothing in there that shouldn't be public. I just, we just sort of have this rule in the, in the committee that until it goes public, we don't get into all the details. Okay, let me read you a quote from Kenneth Lowry, a former federal prosecutor who was Orr's longtime deputy. Uh, in the New York Times, he says this, it seems that Bruce had two sins. He met with Chris Steele and his wife worked for Fusion GPS. None of that seems wrong to me. Bruce is a straight arrow. He was totally nonpartisan, as we all were expected to be. Bruce Orr gave the dossier to the FBI. Peter Strzok told us that five weeks ago in a hearing, third round of questioning, when I'm asking him about this, Bruce Orr was passing the dossier to the FBI. Here's another fundamental question, Shannon. Why did they need Bruce Orr? Why did Fusion want to work when Chris Steele want to work with Bruce Orr? Christopher Steele was already communicating with the FBI. He was being paid by the FBI. He was working for the FBI. Why did he need to run information through Bruce Orr that he then handed to the FBI? Why not just give it directly to the FBI? Why was, why was Bruce Orr involved at all? But for some reason he was. My guess is because he is deputy, or he's associate uh, deputy attorney general um, at, the, at the Department of Justice, one of the top Justice Department of, uh, officials. That just adds heft and weight to what they were trying to do about this whole dossier, which was the key to everything. So again, you, you didn't need Bruce Orr. Christopher Steele was working with the FBI. He could have just handed them a dossier, which he did. Why did they also run, run it through Bruce Orr and then him give it to the FBI? I think that's an important issue that we need to discuss and explore some more as well. Mm -hmm. Congressman Jim Jordan, we will look forward to that transcript. Thank you for your time tonight, sir.